Okay, we are here with actor Danny Donnelly. He just completed filming A Place in Hell, and he's originally from Philadelphia. Why don't you talk a bit about when you decided you wanted to do this professionally? Okay, I wanted to do this professionally was approximately, professionally I'll say five years now, five years ago. Um, I started out, uh, I mean I've always been an artist. Mm -hmm. I paint, I draw, I write poetry, I've done that since kindergarten, my whole life. It's, it's something I just really enjoyed. It was more for myself because I also grew up playing sports my whole life. I played ice hockey, I played football, I played basketball, I boxed for four years. <laughs> I was very uh, into um, athletics and my father really supported that. He wanted me to be an ice hockey player, but I kind of uh, changed my mind on that. Uh, <laughs> I went to basketball and then I got good at basketball, went to high school for basketball. And, and uh, yeah, but um, acting came about, I was working at University of Penn right after, sorry, I'm turning my phone off. Right after, um, I just forgot about that. I was working at University of Penn um, in the summer right after high school. And Transformers 2 was uh, coming there to shoot on location and my boss was the area manager of where they wanted to shoot their location so she said uh, how about you you know come into come into the meetings with me the producers and uh, you know you can get to meet the people and stuff and I was mm -hmm. a huge, huge film buff as well so I love I just love film so I was like yeah it'd be awesome so I went in with her and uh, met the people and they're like you know you look like college age you should be an extra you no know, go to the open call and give them, give them a, our name and you should be on set I'm like okay so I went I did that and I was on set for a week and you still look college age so that might help <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah yeah that's one thing I also do I don't tell my age or anything so. yeah but um only in terms of acting because I, I feel like people who they find your at your age and try to put you in a box yeah and, you know with the life I've lived and what I've been through a lot of people, I get along with a lot more people that are older, a lot older than me, than I do, than the younger generation. Um, but yeah, trans I was on set for trans uh, Transformers 2 for a week. I was waiver tag every day. So I had five waivers and I was a must join for my first project. Wow, that's great. <laughs> it was wonderful, but I had no idea what I was doing. All I know is that when I was on set, I was watching uh, Shia LaBeouf act and I, and I was like I want to do this I think I want to do this and I was just amazed at what was going on behind the scenes and just don't go down his road his no. current road <laughs> no no I, I, I'll say I'm a little method but I I wouldn't go as far as pulling yanking my tooth out from what I heard recently yeah. <laughs> he's done but uh, I was really just amazed of, of the process and um, yeah, so my younger brother also at the same time was started taking acting classes. We're, I'm a family of artists, and uh, he's like, "Dan, you should really give it a shot. I think you'll be good at it." So I was like, "All right." So I just started auditioning, and I booked my first gig, my first audition. And it was an independent film, and it was a feature-length film. Uh, it was Chekhov's *The Seagull*, mm -hmm. and. Uh, it was made to like a 1920s, 30s era. The whole script was rewritten that way. And uh, yeah, when I went to the audition, I did a monologue. So I, I looked up what I had to do for an audition. And we really need a monologue. I did a monologue and the director was like, have you ever done this before? And I was like, no. And he's like, well, you're a natural, so keep, it, you know, keep with it. And I was like, all right. And then I kind of took off from there. I just started auditioning. And then um, I didn't just want to be a, you know, a good actor, I want to be a great actor. So I started training and I started studying with some of my favorite actors, uh, Brando, James Dean, this is people I grew up on to my father, watched a lot of old movies. And right. Yeah, he's a big cinephile too. So <laughs> so he introduced me to all these old actors who I grew up and I really adored and um, Paul Newman and then Sean Penn and, and I started studying what they did. And I had this method started coming up. So I started reading Stanislavski and uh, Lee Strasberg and you know, training basically on my own. Um, uh, emotional recall, sense of memory, um, and doing what they did in terms of studying and uh, preparation for roles and research and 
I really got in depth with that, and then I started taking classes at Temple University, where I was in school there. I declared a minor in theater. I majored in broadcast journalism. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I was in love with acting the whole entire time, and I just started getting gigs left and right, and then went from there to stage and theater. And yeah, I was just going to say for somebody who's kind of less than five years in, you have a you know a massive amount of credits for someone who's been in it that short a time. Yeah, I was. I like to say. A lot of people say luck, but I also think that hard work does pay off. Absolutely. And I was, you know, I was going to school and working. I worked all through college, plus going to school. And that's something my dad instilled in me, was hard work. You know, I grew up, he's a contractor. He had me learn how to make a dollar selling soda and pretzels at baseball games when I yeah. was like eight years old. And then working with him as a plumber, and he's a contractor, got doing, you know, as a helper. You know, he's paying me a little bit of money, and I'm learning how to save, and what it takes to get your hands dirty. You know, and doing whatever it takes. Trying to, he had a, you know, a whole family from Kensington to Philadelphia, and my dad really worked his way up. That probably made your drive to succeed at acting even harder, because it was instilled in you to, to really work hard. Yeah, yeah, and I've, I've kind of always approached that, even with basketball or ice hockey or any other sports I played too I just I mean I, I fell in love with basketball when I took it up and I was at the playground every day practicing 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 I read up read up on my favorite basketball players I kind of like the research thing I think was already instilled only because I fell in love with what I was doing and I've been in love with acting for almost seven years now since I started and it's it's I, I love it. I just, I just love, I love the process. I love, I love connecting with people. I think people are amazing. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm fascinated by people. Um, I'm very, also raised to be very open-minded, uh, open heart. My family was very open. They are. Um, so I guess my upbringing really instilled <laughs> yeah. my drive and everything that uh, has happened to me in the past. Five years professionally as an actor is it's because of my father, you know. And, That's cool. And my mother, just a great household and very supportive too. Yeah, you said you perform in theater and movies, but do you have a not a preference? I know that a lot of people say theater is more immediate feedback, but you know, is there one that you find that you enjoy being part of more? For equal, but for different reasons. Okay, uh, yeah. I've been asked this question quite a few times. Um, first starting out, I love film. And then um, a friend of mine from New York said, you're doing some great work in film, but I really think if you're going to go any further, you should do some theater. Do something theater on your resume. So I auditioned for a play um, that went up at the Adrian Theater in Center City in Philadelphia. I booked the lead, and I kind of just, I fell in love with theater. It was, and I feel as an actor, theater is more rewarding. I mean, it's more of an actor's medium, where film is director's medium. You know, I can give a great performance on film, but they can cut it any way they want. Right. So I have to make sure I'm just real and honest in every every different take. Mm -hmm. You know, and whatever happens, happens. I never try to expect anything. I never try to assume something's going to happen at all. I just try to be moment to moment. And then I think that's what offers different takes. Also, different. I might say a line a different way, or something might emotionally be different than the last take, only because I'm just listening and being in the moment. And um, and with theater, just the the immediate feedback, the audience is there, they're with you, you know, they're crying with you, they're laughing with you, and that energy is just <laughs> as performer as an actor, it's amazing. And I would think as an actor, I love theater a little bit more than film. It just takes a lot more time with rehearsals and everything. Or film, I can usually work around my schedule depending on the project, right. especially with the other job, <laughs> the, the other job or the hobby that pays my yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pays my way because acting is not my hobby, it's my career. Yeah. And I, I, I'm in love with it. So. And that's a difficult thing to grapple with, knowing 
that you are working full time at a survival job, as they like to call it. It's, yeah. Everybody needs a survival job. It's not, you know, it's not anything obviously bad to have. But your acting is your main passion. Yeah. And you're you've done extensive credits. I mean, you've run the gamut. You've done a horror film. <laughs> Actually, my first, well, my second horror film, uh, I did a, but my first feature horror film, I should say, and uh, yeah, where I, was, where I was actually the lead, so. So you made it out alive, though. Oh. <laughs> Doesn't count if you don't die in a horror movie. <laughs> I'm not gonna say. Anything. All right, we will. Uh, we will pick that movie up and we will see for ourselves. Yeah. So. Now you are uh, planning to move here into the city. Well, yes. that uh, that's going to obviously open up doors for theater, mm -hmm. where you could either you know book you know write your own show and put it up, use friend shows. Is that something that you'd be interested in? I'm already doing it. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Um, <laughs> I already psyched. have a short film that's out in festivals right now that I wrote, directed, and acted. Um, it's called Welcome Home, mm -hmm. and. Yeah, so far I won one award for the best uh, short the Philadelphia Independent Film Festival. Very nice. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It was it's a um, it's a film that came about um, because I had conversations with a friend of mine who was in the army. And he just got back. It was in the Air Force, my fault. And he just got back, and we we're talking about the transition coming from there from Iraq to back home, and he. It was tough for him, mm -hmm. and I was actually, we were at a, out at one time, and my friends and I, I grew up with the same friends since like kindergarten, you know, same group of guys, and we always joked around and stuff, well someone said something to him, and it's just, he just snapped, and then talking with him, I learned where it was coming from, Right. so I couldn't imagine it, so I imagined it, and I wrote the script, and another friend of mine, a cinematographer friend, wanted to do a film like Cloverfield, where it was like all handheld. So we did this short film, a drama, and I, it's from the younger brother's perspective, the family's perspective of their son coming home from Iraq. And how they're just so happy that he's not physically harmed, but mentally and emotionally, he is not the same guy. And they just don't know how to grapple with that. So it's not a, a happy film, no. <laughs> but um, but you won an award, so who cares? No. <laughs> <laughs> I I just I the award it, it, it's it's nice and everything, but what I really loved was the experience of screening it and seeing how people really believe that it was a real film. Cause right. like how I shot it, younger brother is doing the cinematography and he's doing it for a class, and he's like, oh, I'm just gonna get my brother's welcome home party, you know, I'll film that. And so, yeah, so the camera became like a character, you know, and it was right in the middle of, the, of this drama. So it's not like a horror film, but it's kind of scary of right. how, I guess, real it could be. And a lot of people were taken back by it. Um, they asked if it was real, <laughs> if it was, I'm like, no, it's a you know, fictional film. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they, they, they really loved how it was from the family's perspective and dealing with someone coming back instead of from his perspective. And they, a lot of people could relate who had friends in the military or people coming home from war. So. Right. Um, what advice would you give to someone who is just starting out? You're relatively new, but you have, you know, a lot of credits under your belt. What advice would I give? I would uh, say, you know, just do it. Do it if you if you. I always said this from digging digging holes in my other job. Um, this kind of I guess analogy I came up with was you know you can study the ground for hours. Mm -hmm. That hole is not going to get dug until you start digging it. You know and you'll figure out the best way to dig out a hole as you go along. So I think the same approach with life and with acting. Just do it. I've I've always been a person to jump both feet in and to figure it out as I went. Yeah, I read and research wide while pursuing though. I didn't just do a bunch of studying. Okay, now I'm gonna do it, or mm -hmm. it's at the right time. You know, we only live one life. Life is too short as it is. I mean, we're on the earth, what, 85 years, if we're lucky, anymore. Right. So, you know, I'm just, it's one day at a time. 
you know, and, and if you're really passionate about it and you and you love it, and you love what you do, you'll find a way to do it. When there's a will, there's a way. I mean, I worked odd jobs. I I hardly sleep, but I love doing what I do. I come home after a 15-hour day of digging holes and doing barbed wire and hanging wire, and I'm writing scripts. I'm reading scripts. I'm writing poetry. I'm painting. I'm just doing stuff that I love. But I'm up to three in the morning, waking up at six, go back to work. Yeah. You know, it's just. Like I said, when there's a will, there's a way. And if you really want to do it, start looking for auditions, look for training. I definitely say you definitely need to train. Mm -hmm. You have to approach it with an open mind and an open heart, I believe. I mean, especially in a society where it's so judgmental and people are judged on looks and on where they grew up. Mm -hmm. I, I think you need to approach everyone with the same open mind, they're just a human being, and everyone has a reason for who they are and where they're at. And I, and if you can, if you can connect, you'll find ways to connect. There's different, everyone has, I think everyone has something in common. And when the more you talk to someone, you'll figure. You'll realize it. You'll realize it. Yeah. Realize it. yeah. The same way I approach a script. You'll start the more you read the script and get to know these people. I don't say characters. There are people with the story, not characters in the script. That's what I believe in. And once you get to know these people, you'll see similarities. It might not be exactly the same thing, but the same emotion mm -hmm. derived from a certain thing, whether a loss of a loved one or a sense of confusion or nervousness or and it'd be a, just the same kind of emotion but in a different a different uh, scene in their life so well you definitely have the desire and the dedication but you also have the demeanor you seem like someone who what you see is what you get and yeah. you're very um, like you said open-minded but you could just tell with certain people that they're they are who they are and uh, yeah. so I wish you all the success, boop, success in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I look forward to hearing about your next project. And maybe we right, can hook up you. later and thank later you. in time and yeah. get the place an in hell, uh, the, yeah. yeah, at the end of the year. Um, yeah. There should be a lot more press coming out and everything. So great. We'll see what happens with that. But uh, yeah, train and just do it. Do it. If you want something, go after it. Mm -hmm. Don't wait. There's no, you know, <laughs> no such thing as. You know, uh, those who are patient or come no. Work your ass off, work hard. If you want it, you'll find the time to do it. Thank so, you so much for taking well. the time to do this interview. Thank you.